Okay, now let's talk about how movement is controlled by the brain. So the process for uh, the initiating a movement from the brain is kind of complicated, so uh, it may be helpful to sort of break it down into a uh, simplified hierarchy of sorts. Um, so at the top level you have and of course here we're talking about voluntary movement so these are movements that you uh, initiate voluntarily uh, with a with a goal in mind um, so these are not for example reflex movements um, like we talked about in the last chapter uh, so so this involves you know decision making planning um, and that level of thought or that level uh, what we call the strategy level of a movement um, that occurs in in the cerebral cortex for the most part, uh, including the so-called association areas of the cortex. And this is just the parts of the cortex that take sensory input from different uh, different modalities and kind of put together your, uh, your view of the world, essentially. Because, of course, moving requires knowing where objects are in space around you, uh, where your body is in, in relation to those objects, um, and so on. Um, and then uh, there are there are that includes uh, the cortex. But then there are also some subcortical regions that help process that information, and uh, we'll talk about uh, that later. So the basal ganglia uh, are involved in that process also. Um, and so again, strategy is about uh, just knowing what your your goal is for your movement and how uh, what, how you're going to actually achieve it. Um, and then the tactics uh, level of a of a motor uh, hierarchy refers to okay, we we know what we want to do, we know uh, what uh, what our goal is in this movement. So then the question is, what muscles uh, need to be contracted and in what order in order to create uh, that smooth motion um, and also keeping you know the the body posture upright uh, the whole time so that level of processing happens for the most part in the motor cortex which we'll be talking about so this is um, uh, primarily the primary motor cortex but also some adjacent regions um, and then for certain types of movements that uh, level of, of processing also requires input from the cerebellum um, and then uh, finally, the uh, once the the plan for which muscles to move and which order has been worked out, um, we move on to the execution step, which is actually sending the commands to the muscles to contract. And that happens um, in the brainstem and the spinal cord, which is what we talked about in the last chapter. So, so the the alpha motor neurons that actually send signals to the muscles to contract um, it is what we talked about uh, last time and that's that's the very bottom of the motor hierarchy so um, so everything else uh, involving motor planning um, happens in the brain which is what this chapter deals with so even though the, the decisions about uh, what parts of the body to move and how come from the brain the the commands ultimately go out to the muscles from the spinal cord so there has to be a connection from the brain to the to the spinal cord and uh, those uh, connections we call the descending spinal tracts so um, keep in mind when we say the word descending uh, we mean going from the brain to the spinal cord ascending would be going from the spinal cord to the brain doesn't necessarily mean going down um, now it does in humans because of course the brain is usually uh, uh, above the spinal cord but um, but this the word descending would apply even if you were talking about an animal that uh, is uh, uh, walking around on four legs but in any case the the descending spinal tracts uh, are bundles of axons that go through the spinal cord that just uh, connect uh, again parts of the brain with the neurons in the spinal cord the motor neurons that are going to control the muscles and most of them are in either the uh, the ventral or the lateral parts of the spinal cord remember that the dorsal um, parts of the spinal cord uh, up here are where uh, sensory information comes in so again these are um, these are the dorsal columns up here. So these are the dorsal columns, and they 
contain sensory axons for the most part. Whereas the other white matter columns in the spinal cord contain uh, axons from, from coming down from the brain that are going to be more important for movement. So uh, we divide them into two groups. The lateral pathways um, are these guys over here that are uh, in blue. Um, and then the ventromedial pathways. And of course, there's a, uh, one of these on each side. So there's a left and right set of these, these uh, groups. These are the ventromedial pathways. And they are um, uh, involved in voluntary and involuntary movements, respectively. So, so again, a voluntary movement is one that you sort of consciously have control over. Um, and uh, I said before that the uh, the spinal cord itself is involved in a lot of involuntary movements directly, the, the so-called spinal reflexes, but uh, there are also involuntary movements that are controlled by the brain. So more complex involuntary movements, or uh, especially those involving, um, you know, for example, posture of the body, um, are still to some extent controlled by the, uh, by the brain as well. Um, and so the, the different groups of, of axons here are just uh, involved in different parts of that process. So the lateral pathways uh, consist of two bundles of axons, one called the corticospinal tract and the other called the rubrospinal tract. The corticospinal tract, and all of these tracts, by the way, or all these pathways, are pretty straightforward. They're usually named after where they initiate and where they end. So the corticospinal tract for example, starts in the motor cortex and then it ends in the spinal cord. So uh, the the beginning of the the uh, corticospinal pathway oops, is the motor cortex, like I said, and so uh, that's where the neurons, um, uh, the cell bodies of the corticospinal tract initiate. So we have uh, the neurons up here, and then the axons come down uh, through the white matter of the cortex, through this uh, uh, bundle of white matter um, in the diencephalon called the internal capsule. So it's just here above the, uh, uh, right beside the thalamus. And then that comes down um, through the midbrain. Um, and then there's a, uh, this bundle of axons, uh, or this part of the corticospinal tract in the midbrain is called the cerebral peduncle. Um, and then uh, that continues through the medulla, and then uh, the the uh, uh, axons go through a white matter uh, bundle through here called the medullary pyramid. Now, one thing that's important: all these structures, the medullary pyramids, the cerebral peduncles, um, and internal capsule. It's all part of the same pathway. We just give them names at different levels um, because of mostly the shape they take uh, when you look at them in cross-section. Um, but what's important is after the medullary pyramid, so after the axons pass through the medulla, they cross to the opposite side. So uh, this region here called the pyramidal decussation um, is just the place where the axons go from, in this case, from the right side of the brain to the left side of the spinal cord. Um, and so that means, of course, that the right side of the brain controls the muscles on the left side of the body and vice versa. Uh, but in any case, after the pyramidal decussation, the axons cross and, and form, start to form the actual corticospinal tract itself. Um, and then the axons terminate uh, in the ventral horn of the spinal cord um, or whichever spinal segment uh, corresponds to the the muscles that the uh, that neuron controls, um, and so uh, you know, if, let's say this is from a uh, a part of the motor cortex that controls the arm muscles, then this spinal segment here would be perhaps in the cervical spinal cord, and these motor neurons would control uh, muscles in the arm. And then another part of the uh, lateral pathway, the other uh, half of the lateral pathways, are, is the rubrospinal tract. Um, the rubrospinal tract initiates uh, 
with neurons that are in this structure here called the red nucleus. In fact, that's what the word rubro means. It's just a comes from the uh, either Latin or Greek word for for red. Um, the red nucleus is just called that because under certain um, histological preparations, it just looks red uh, or kind of dark brown. But uh, the or light brown, I guess. But the uh, the neurons themselves are just uh, here in the midbrain, and their axons come out and uh, cross actually before they get to med the medulla, but then they also terminate in the spinal cord the same way that the corticospinal tract neurons do. Um, now, in uh, humans, the, uh, the corticospinal tract is a much more important pathway for controlling voluntary movement than the rubrospinal pathway. Uh, the rubrospinal pathway is more uh, prominent in um, mostly non-primate mammals, but uh, uh, and in fact, the, the motor cortex also has a, uh, a branch. So in other words, there's axons that come out of the motor cortex and then input onto the, the red nucleus. So in a sense, um, the rubrospinal tract is just kind of a, uh, another pathway for the cortex to communicate with the spinal cord. Um, and we'll come back and talk about the motor cortex a lot more later. Um, and so the other pathways through the spinal cord we call the ventromedial pathways. So the, the ventromedial pathways are divided up into several uh, smaller pathways as well. The vestibulospinal tract uh, starts with the vestibular nucleus. So the vestibular nucleus is here in the medulla as well. And it is uh, the nucleus that we've heard of before because it is uh, where inputs from the vestibular system come in. So if you remember when we talked about uh, the vestibular labyrinth that includes the semicircular canals and the otolith organs um, and hopefully remember that they're responsible for detecting the the movement um, and the position of the head so so the semicircular canals detect angular acceleration of the head so when you're turning your head in any given direction and then the otolith organs detect both linear acceleration uh, of the head and the direction of gravity so um, that's kind of how you know where your head is in space and where where whether or not it's moving um, and so the vestibular nucleus gets that information directly from the uh, the vestibular uh, organs but then it communicates among other places with the spinal cord via the vestibular spinal tract so those axons go down uh, through again the, one of the ventromedial pathways here really close to the the middle of the spinal cord and then uh, they actually branch and go to both sides so both the left and right vestibular nucleus project to both the left and right sides of the spinal cord so this pathway is really important for balance and posture so those neurons communicate and and control uh, or influence the muscles that uh, are important for just kind of keeping your body upright which of course if you're uh, is important for balance uh, meanwhile, the tectospinal tract initiates in the superior colliculus. The reason it's called the tectospinal tract is because the dorsal side, the other name for the dorsal side of the midbrain, is the, the tectum. So this region is called the tectum. Um, and so that's why this is called the tectospinal tract. Um, even though it only originates in one part of the tectum, which is the superior colliculus. Um, the other major division of the tectum is the inferior colliculus. But uh, we've also heard of the superior colliculus before because that is one of the parts of the brain that get direct input from the retina. So there, there are direct projections from the retinal ganglion cells um, to the superior colliculus. This is not part of the pathway that communicates with the visual cortex, um, but it is important for uh, some some visual reflexes. So the projection from the tectum uh, or from the superior colliculus goes to the spinal cord. It's it's uh, unilateral, unlike the vestibular spinal tract. So it only goes to one side, um, and it does cross. It crosses pretty much immediately after leaving the tectum, um, and so these. Neurons control a lot of visual reflexes, so um, a lot of visually orienting, visual orienting reflexes, so turning the head toward a novel visual stimulus, for example.
And then finally, we have the reticulospinal tracts. So the reticulospinal tracts initiate in this region called the reticular formation. So the reticular formation is, is not really a, a discrete nucleus um, like the other uh, structures we've talked about. Instead, it's this sort of distributed um, array of neurons that are uh, interconnected with each other. In fact, that's what the word reticular means. It means like a network um, because that's what we're talking about. Uh, and in fact, there's really two parts of the reticular formation. The pontine reticular formation, uh, as the name implies, is in the pons. And then the medullary reticular formation is in the medulla. Um, so both of those form the reticular spinal tract. Uh, their axons come down through the spinal cord um, and they stay on the same side. So this is this is not a, uh, a contralateral projection, that's an ipsilateral projection. So the, the left uh, side stays on the left side and right side stays on the right. Um, and these pathways are involved in what are called anti-gravity reflexes. Um, and that basically means uh, any reflexes that are involved in uh, working sort of against gravity. So gravity generally pulls you down. And so keeping your body upright against gravity um, involves the coordination of a lot of your, your uh, uh, axial muscles, your leg muscles. Um, and so those, those reflexes, those muscles necessary for, for keeping your balance um, generally operate on their own without any uh, input from the brain. But the pontine uh, reticular formation uh, its axons are necessary for kind of enhancing anti-gravity re reflexes. So when you want to sort of consciously um, uh, keep your balance, uh, then the pontine reticular formation is important for that. Uh, meanwhile, the medullary reticular formation actually releases the anti-gravity reflexes, um, which basically means uh, anytime you want to um, uh, allow the body to move um, with gravity, in other words, actually like uh, sit down or lie down, um, then the medullary reticular formation would be involved in that process. So this just shows uh, kind of a summary of all the different descending uh, pathways here. So one thing that's important to show is that all of these pathways uh, go to the spinal cord, go to the motor neurons of the spinal cord, um, but all of them are uh, under the control of the motor cortex. So um, we'll be talking about the motor cortex next because the motor cortex, uh, again, directly communicates with the spinal cord, um, but it also has uh, the ability to control all of the other pathways as well. So there's a projection from the cortex that goes to the red nucleus and a projection that goes to um, all of the various ventromedial pathways as well. So uh, Again, ultimately, the cortex is where all sort of voluntary movements are initiated and where all, uh, you know, otherwise involuntary movements can be um, uh, either reinforced or uh, suppressed. So um, that's what we will talk about next.